Hello, my name is Natasha and I'm a biomaterials scientist at Cell Guidance Systems. I'm going to be talking to you today about enhancing 3D cell culture with growth factor functionalized hydrogels. So Cell Guidance Systems has an in-house technology um, called PODs. PODs are crystals of the polyhedron protein. Polyhedron is derived from an insect viral protein which would normally protect the virus from stresses within the environment. These crystals can be engineered to contain a protein of interest, which includes growth factors. And these proteins are encased inside the crystal as they grow. These polyhedron crystals containing cargo protein can be produced inside insect cells using a bacular virus construct containing the two proteins, both under the control of the same promoter. These are co-expressed and the shell protein polyhedron self-assembles into cubic crystals during assembly, with the tagged cargo protein being inserted. The insect cells can then be lysed and the purified pods extracted. Pods crystals containing growth factors have many advantages for cell culture. The crystal structure protects the cargo proteins from physical and chemical stresses. For example, temperature stress, UV stress or chemical stress, such as from organic solvents. These properties means that they can withstand stresses from curing processes in hydrogel and biomaterials manufacture. Pods cargo is released when proteases that are present in cell culture medium or are generated by cells degrade the protein of the crystal. This releases the growth factor cargo into the media as a soluble protein, which then acts as it would normally. In this way, the pods crystals act as depots of growth factor that are slowly released for long periods of time. We have tracked release from pods for over two months. Pods can be combined with hydrogels for complex cultures, including for 3D culture and for organoids. This video shows that pods can be embedded homogeneously within a hydrogel, with pods distributed in all planes of view. They're well dispersed in the X and the Y planes, as well as the, the Z dimension, which is what the video shows. The black dots you can see here are individual pods crystals. The growth factor diffuses homogeneously throughout the gel from the pods. The method for combining pods with hydrogel is just as simple as pre-mixing ungelled gel with the crystals and proceeding as normal for curing or cross-linking. We can evaluate the release of pods cargo using an ELISA assay to measure the content of cell culture supernatant. These results show release rates from pods when they are embedded in collagen on the right, compared to when they are simply dried onto the, cell, the surface of a cell culture vessel on the left. We have pods at two different concentrations here, so 100,000 per well or a million per well. And as you can see, the trends of release over the experimental period are very similar for both formats, both with and without gel. The serum in the media provides the source of the proteases for degradation, and we can see a dose response in both formats. Properties of hydrogels, including the stiffness, can also be tuned without affecting the pods release. For example, uh, we have tested here three different gels of different stiffnesses from Manchester Biogel. They've been evaluated for IL-6 release from pods um, when they're embedded throughout the gel. Release from each gel follows a very similar trend and gives similar levels of release regardless of the stiffness. When we move on to looking at pods biological activity in simple 3D culture systems, there is no detrimental effect of pods on hydrogel structural integrity. So here, non-adherent TF1 cells have been cultured in a soft gel, again from Manchester Biogel, with pods IL-6, which they require for survival and proliferation. From microscopy images, cell viability is maintained and the hydrogel remained intact throughout the 28-day culture period. Also in this experiment, cell proliferation was measured with a colorimetric cell counting assay. The cells proliferated fourfold over the four-week period in line with expectation. The cells in this experiment have been cultured without additional growth factor which they would normally die without. This shows that the pods are releasing bioactive cargo for the entire 28-day culture period.
Functionalization of hydrogels with pods is also useful for more complex culture systems, including organoids. In this experiment, breast cancer organoids were embedded in a synthetic peptide-based hydrogel. They were cultured in complete medium containing soluble FGF2, as this bar on the left, compared to minimal medium, but with embedded pods FGF2. As you can see from the similar levels of growth, the pods were able to compensate for the lack of soluble growth factor and organoid growth after eight days was the same for both conditions. This was a single dose of pods given at the start of the experiments and required minimal further interve intervention, um, just one half base medium change, whereas the full media composition required full media changes every two days to maintain the growth factor levels. Another ex example with organoids is pancreatic organoids with embedded pods RSPO1 and RSPO3. These organoids are cultured in gel tricks, which is similar to metrogel. Pods RSPO1 compensates for the lack of soluble growth factor in minimal media and maintains growth rate comparable to those in complete medium. Pods with hydrogels can also be easily adapted to in vivo applications. In this example, human IPSC derived otic cells, either as spheroids or as dissociated single cell suspension, were injected into the cochlea of mice. A second set of cells were injected along with Grodex T, a cellulose based hydrogel, either with or without pods BDNF, which is a neurotrophic growth factor. When looking at cell engraftment, a proxy for survival, the presence of pods enhances survival of dissociated cells, although the presence of the cellulose matrix is responsible for the majority of the increase in survival of cells in spheroids. However, when looking at cell maturation nine weeks following implant, as measured by neurite number, the pods BDNF are clearly having a significant effect on maturation of the cells from the spheroids. These images show the differences in neurite outgrowth depending on the treatment. There is an obvious improvement when the cells are in contact with both Grodex T and Pods BDNF. Hence, we can see that hydrogels functionalized with pods can have a synergistic effect on cell phenotype in complex in vivo systems. So, in conclusion, Pods have been combined with and shown to be compatible with several hydrogel types of different origins. This makes them compatible with a wide range of applications and culture systems. Their robustness also makes them suitable for many hydrogel fabrication processes. And these hydrogels can also be functionalized with localized depots of growth factor, which means that setting up growth factor gradients in 3D culture is relatively straightforward. I hope I've convinced you that pods and hydrogels are a useful tool for 3D cell culture. And thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.